on guys, in today's video we are going to be discussing engine fundamentals, but specifically we're going to be talking about the actions within a cylinder. Now let's get into this video. The basic parts of an engine are the cylinders, pistons, connecting rods and the crankshaft. The pistons are a sliding fit within the cylinder and they have rings around them called compression rings. These rings provide a gas tight seal against the cylinder wall. There are three vital components for any engine to be able to run. They are compression, fuel and ignition in that order. The way we make these parts move and rotate within an engine comes to chemical energy. Now let's take a look at what chemical energy actually is. Chemical energy is the energy, sorry, the energy stored within the bonds of chemical compounds. These are known as atoms and molecules. This energy is released with a chemical reaction. In terms of an engine, there are three ingredients we need to be able to create a chemical reaction. They are oxygen, petroleum, and an open spark caused by the electrical current. Once all three ingredients are present, a chemical reaction will occur. The, re the energy caused by this reaction is harnessed and turned into mechanical energy, which is how these parts are able to move. Now, let's get into this diagram that I've laid out on this whiteboard and discuss in depth the four strokes of a typical engine. All right, guys, before I get into the four strokes, I just want to show you a model of what some of the parts that I was talking about before. This top piece here is called uh, the piston or the piston head. This shaft here that comes down to the bottom is called the connecting rod. These two bits up here, these two uh, rings, these shiny rings here, they're the compression rings that I was talking about before and they're the ones that have that gas tight seal against the cylinder wall. I don't have a cylinder nor do I have a crankshaft to show you as an example, but if you've seen my videos of me rebuilding my engine, you will be able to see them and understand what they are. Also, before we get into the first stroke, I just want to show you this here. This is octane and petroleum. This is actually a hydrocarbon. Uh, this is what the chemical compound of it looks like. And this is what is in the fuel that we use in our motors to create the chemical reaction. Now, I want to uh, get into the first stroke of our four-stroke engine. Uh, let's you say for... For the example of this video, this is a naturally aspirated engine, meaning it does not have a supercharger, nor does it have a turbocharger on the engine. So uh, the first stroke is the intake stroke. Now the intake stroke draws in two substances. The first substance is fuel, that is supplied by a fuel pump, and it is injected by an injector either into the inlet manifold, which will sit before this, uh, it's not drawn on, or it will be injected directly into the cylinder. So this uh, area here is the cylinder or the combustion chamber. Here we have our cylinder walls that go down either side and here we have our piston, right? So obviously the cylinder is uh, round. Um, so uh, the intake stroke actually starts with the piston uh, about the top of the, uh, of the cylinder and as the direction of rotation draws the piston down, it creates an area within inside the cylinder uh, which acts as a vacuum and that sucks the air and fuel into the cylinder which is the intake stroke. Now let's move on to the compression stroke. So moving on now to our compression stroke. So the compression stroke uh, is when the piston compresses the air and fuel by forcing it into a smaller area. The compression stroke actually helps mix these uh, different molecules and atoms of the fuel and air together. Uh, the compression stroke occurs when the piston is roughly about one third of its way going back up. Uh, so here we've got our direction of rotation again and we have the direction of the piston traveling back up. So the compression stroke begins when this piston is about one third of its way going back up. Um, remember that we haven't achieved one complete 360 revolution yet because the intake stroke starts when the piston is at the top, it goes down and then the compression stroke starts when it's going back up one third of the way. So the compression stroke will finish uh, when the piston reaches the top of the cylinder and that will achieve the first 360 revolution, which will move on to now our third stroke, which is combustion, also known as power. Okay, so moving on to our third stroke, combustion. So this is the stroke where a chemical reaction occurs and this is why I was explaining all of this stuff about chemistry before and chemical compounds. So what actually happens is a spark is delivered. This is a spark plug. So a spark is delivered when the piston is at about almost at the top of the cylinder. So a spark is delivered which ignites the air and fuel mixture also known as the different chemical compounds. 
that have been mixed together, ignites that, creates a chemical reaction, an explosion occurs inside your cylinder, and forces this piston to go flogging back down. Uh, the direction of rotation always stays the same, and here we have the direction of the piston going back down, so the explosion has already occurred. Now this uh, energy created by this chemical reaction is the power that uh, we get supplied uh, and we turn that into mechanical energy through these various components which and eventually finds its way to, you, to your, either your front wheels, your back wheels or all four wheels and that is the power that drives your car and enables it to move. So now we're going to uh, move on to our fourth and final stroke and explain uh, that stroke and why it is so important. Just before we get into our last stroke, the exhaust stroke, I just want to explain one thing really quickly. So once a chemical reaction occurs, uh, those substances change into a completely new substance. So that means once, it, once this uh, explosion has occurred, this chemical reaction, the air and fuel inside the cylinder changes into a new substance. So uh, that is basically where the exhaust gases come from. So you can't really burn them as as well, they still kind of burn because the engine isn't very efficient, but uh, that's where exhaust gases come from and that's why we have our next stroke because we need to get them out. So let's now move on to our final stroke, the exhaust stroke. So moving on to our fourth and final stroke of our four stroke combustion engine, the exhaust stroke is actually pretty much the complete opposite of the intake stroke. So the intake, we have a new substance being drawn or sucked into the cylinder Whereas the exhaust stroke, we have a new substance that is being pushed out of the cylinder. Now our newly formed substance that uh, has been created following our combustion does not burn quite as well as the air and fuel that it once was. So we need to get rid of it out of the cylinder. Now the exhaust stroke actually occurs two thirds of the way down when the piston's going back down from its combustion. So I'll explain that like this. So our, our piston's at the top, combustion's occurred, the explosion's happened, it's pushed the piston down. Now when the piston reaches two thirds of its way of its travel going back down, that starts our exhaust stroke. So it doesn't start when it's completely down, it's two thirds. So our exhaust stroke starts two thirds of the way down on the piston following the power stroke. As the direction of rotation continues, the piston is pushed upwards, forcing our newly formed chemical compounds out through the exhaust. So this, that is basically how uh, the exhaust stroke works and along with all four strokes it will continue to work like that in a vicious cycle and that is how a uh, four stroke engine is able to run by itself uh, so long as it keeps doing these four things. Now keep in mind there are a lot of other parts uh, in an engine that enable this to work properly but this is the basic concept of how uh, the engine works, uh, the four strokes explained. Uh, with the hydrocarbons or the chemical compounds used with air and our ignition source, our spark plug, to great, create combustion and power that we ever so love. Within what I've just explained, there are still a number of things that are occurring within an internal combustion engine that need to be explained. Such things like valve overlap and exhaust scavenging are just to name a few. I'll be covering such topics in future videos. And just before I conclude this video, I want to let you guys in on a backyard mechanic fun fact. The internal combustion engine is actually very inefficient, for those who didn't know that. Its efficiency is measured in thermal efficiency, which basically means uh, the energy caused by heat and light transferred into another form of uh, energy, in our situation, mechanical energy. Now, the internal combustion engine averages about 20% thermal efficiency, which really, when you think about it, is pretty horrible. It's pretty bad. Um, so with that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, understand the, fun the, the engine fundamentals and basics of how the four strokes work with each other. Um, and a little bit about the chemistry, basic chemistry, uh, about it all as well. Uh, so without further ado guys, I hope you enjoyed this video once again. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Mm-hmm. I'll see you on the next one.